Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. You know, both of us really consider ourselves dog people. We love dogs. Yep. I have my pit bull, Belle, who doesn't listen to anything that I say. <laughs> I've explained that a couple of times. Yep. You were telling me that you're volunteering time at the Front Street Animal Shelter, and next weekend you have a four-hour class where you're teaching dogs to sit. Yeah. I'll give you an example of my dog real quick, okay? Okay. Ronnie, I'll be Bell, and you tell me to sit, okay? Okay. Seats. Bell. Seats. Bell. Seats. I'm not that kind of dog. Oh. I don't do that. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we have a story about dogs and dog bites and what is your liability as a pet owner next on Men Are So Smart. So this is a dog owner's worst nightmare, honestly. Uh, due to unforeseen collision of circumstances, your dog is lashed out and attacked either another animal or a God, person. God forbid. Yeah, that's the worst possible circumstance. Mm -hmm. uh, to get some insight into what a dog owner is liable for if their dog is involved in a dog attack and what the best course of action might be, people spoke with Amy Nichols, who's the vice president of Companion An Animals and Equine at the Humane Society of the United States. Nichols has worked with animals for 20 years and knows the good and bad situations that can come up when caring for a pet. Nichols says, as with other issues, the best way to keep your dog out of an attack is keep it out of an attack situation. That's good prevention. Uh, a responsible pet owner always has them on a leash when in public. You train and socialize your dog and take, step, uh, take steps not to put them in, train, in situations where a dog could attack uh, another person or another animal. Okay, so here are some situations where dogs might become a little dicey. Dogs meeting on uneven ground. If one dog is on a leash and an unfamiliar unleashed dog runs up to him, it can make even the friendliest dog react poorly as they may feel protective, fearful, or just plain annoyed. That's what Bell would be. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you really serious? You're going to do that to me? Yep. All right. Um, so I've seen this, she says, when out for walks with her own dog, where the owner of an unleashed dog will say, oh, don't worry, he's friendly, as their dog runs up to my dog. I often think to myself that I'm lucky my dog is not only friendly, but doesn't seem to mind dogs running full speed into his face yeah. when I would understand completely if he did. And you know, this happened to me. Uh, I took the family on a dog walk. We went down to the school close by and there was only one other person there and he had a dog. And for not whatever reason, and not on a leash, and he had to come over where we were. We were minding our own business on a whole different portion of the school, yeah. but he had to come over with his dog. And what was the first thing he said to me? Is your dog friendly? And I go, well, yeah, most of the time. Yeah. And then his dog started stuff with my dog. I almost said the word. <laughs> and his dog started stuff with my dog. Yep. His dog started with my dog. He's asking me if my dog is friendly. Yeah. Don't uh, put dogs in that situation. No. The, the next thing that can cause a, a dog to lash out is if the dog uh, is a resource garter, is what they call it. So if your dog is, if they value food, or a toy and they don't want to share it uh, and one dog wants to get in it that's gonna cause a problem oh yeah uh, just like with kids dogs often whatever the other dog has even it's even if it's the same exact thing owners need to be aware of this particularly with new or visiting dogs so one thing they say about we have a German Shepherd in a lab and the one thing they say about German Shepherds is the toy in my mouth is my toy and the toy in your mouth is, is my, my toy. toy. <laughs> so it's kind of like my kids. <laughs> All right, this one is a situation that I constantly have to remind my neighbors. I spend a lot of time at the Gallagher compound in the garage with my dog. Nothing is going to happen in my house with my dog there. Right. Nothing she doesn't want to have happen. I have to remind them, please. Do not just walk up the driveway. Check to see if the dog is there. Yep. 
because dogs need to protect their homes and mine does. If a dog is in their home or a place they may see as theirs, like the garage, and a new dog, whether visiting or a new addition to the family, is first introduced to the home like you uh, recently had, it often doesn't set them up for success. It's why when people adopt a new dog, shelters and rescuers will often advise that they introduce their current dog to the new dog on neutral territory and spend time there before bringing them inside the house. Yeah, so what... Uh, Let them acclimate. When they, when the rescue, both of our dogs are rescue dogs, and when they brought uh, Brandy, which is the German Shepherd, we just, we've had her just about probably three months now. Uh, when they brought her here, they didn't actually bring her to the house. We had Buster on a walk, and the lady joined us mm -hmm. for a walk. Mm -hmm. So Brandy and Buster were... There's a little bit of like, whoa, what's what's this? Gee, that's new. And then yeah, and then after about ten minutes of walking, they're like, oh okay, it's dogs get over things pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. They can kind of rationalize stuff a lot quicker than people can, and they can adjust to it. Uh, and we haven't had a single problem since. Um, so there really is. There's something. There's something about that. I think it has something to do with the socialization. Yes, and our our German Shepherd that we got was not socialized at all. She was an outside dog. Um, she was severely underfed. Yeah, I think she was just a an afterthought. She, I think she may have been a who knows. I I can't say exactly, but certainly she wasn't treated as well as we're treating her now. Uh, this next one. If, uh, if you love Bob Barker, then you know you got to spay and neuter your animals. Not doing so it can cause some aggression in dogs. Uh, whether or not a dog is spayed or neutered can play a role. Used to be the people who would recommend not having two male or female dogs because they wouldn't get along. Uh, this was often based on the fact that spaying and neutering wasn't as common as it is today. Two unneutered or unspayed dogs will often have more disagreements yeah. based on hormone levels than dogs who are spayed or neutered. I I don't like to take any chances. I spay and neuter each one of my animals. Right. Both. I spay and neuter them. <laughs> You're covering all the bases. I, I don't want to take any chances, Ron. Um, lack of socialization. We just kind of mentioned that. Socialization is a key factor. Dogs who are well socialized and continue to be socialized can often handle even the bad situations. I attribute my own dog's demeanor, she says, an extremely high level of tolerance of even the most ill-behaved dogs to him, having practically grown up in the doggy daycare I used to run. This exposed him to many different dogs with different personalities. You know, I know you like to take your animals to the dog park. I don't I would be fearful that I could do that. Yeah, dog parks, uh, they always tell you rescue dogs and dog parks. Don't mix. They don't, they don't mix. Because you really, I mean, if you've owned a dog since it was a puppy, you are probably pretty well aware of what that dog, you know everything that dog's going to do. Exactly. Now, both of our dogs were, uh, Brandy's about a year and a half and Buster was about a year when we got them. There's a lot of time in there where, we're not really sure what went on with them. Mm -hmm. And they're not perfect animals. No, uh, no we, animal is. Yeah, no animal is. The, every animal has it's got some kind of trigger. So you just don't want to put a dog into a situation where you're going to unleash that trigger. Yeah, you know, we have two. Uh, we have a pit bull, and then we have kind of a, just kind of a combo dog. Uh -huh. And um, they are inseparable. Oh, boy. Truly inseparable. They walk next to each other rubbing. They lay next to each other. They lick one another, you know, faces kissing one another. Yep. But you know what? You put one bowl of food out, you got a freaking shootout on your hands. <laughs> and there's no telling who's going to win. It's based on who's hungrier. So uh, even with those two dogs, as loving to one another as they are, right. when you throw food into the mix... It's on. It's bad. Yeah. Bad thing. So avoid that. Yeah. And we did when we first. Oh, and also, ne I'm sorry, Ryan, uh -huh. never, never pet a dog you don't know when it's eating. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and that's, so when we first get a dog, what we like to do is every person in the family 
puts food in the palm of their hand mm-hmm. and has that dog eat right out of their hand. Mm-hmm. And while they're eating, every once in a while, you just pull it back. And then when I'm ready, I put it back. So they realize that, hey, yeah, he's taking the food away, but then he's bringing it back. So they they come to associate everything good coming from you. Mm-hmm. Um, and our, we don't have a problem. I, at any time, I can reach down and pull my dog's dish, even if they're still eating. I can pull it away from them. Um, that's not true with every dog. No. Yeah. So. And you never know. And you really don't. I've I've been bit a couple times by dogs, and it's not very pleasant. Uh, so. Well, along with being familiar with your own dog's personality, it's also extremely important to make yourself familiar with the municipality, city, and state ordinance and laws regarding dogs. The differences between these can vary greatly from place to place, so it's important to keep up to date, especially if you move to a different place. These laws and ordinance can also give you insight into your liability as a dog owner if your dog should, God forbid, attack another dog or human. And um, We recently had a cat that was destroyed, literally destroyed in our front yard by a pack of wild dogs. Oh, damn. And I came home from filming one of these episodes to uh-huh. find that dog on our front lawn. I mean, that cat on our front lawn. Yep. It was terrible. Well, and I can tell you this. I watch a lot of Judge Judy, as I've said before. Uh, if your dog bites a human, you're probably going to be out of pocket about 5000 bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, after medical bills and pain and suffering and emotional distress... Uh, they're going to take you to small claims court, and depending on the s- statute, the, what the limitations are, uh, monetarily wise, in your state, which in California it's five thousand dollars in small claims court, that's about where you're going to be out. So easier, way easier to take a lot of precautions and not have to worry about that. I see people on judge duty all the time say. Yeah, my dog has bit somebody before. Well, hey, you're already on notice then. Mm-hmm. If your dog has bit somebody before... Gee, then, didn't see it coming. Yeah, then you should know. And then, oh, well, we opened the front door and the dog ran out. Well, then you need to have a, some kind of secondary system in place to keep that dog from running out of the like door. Like a leash at the door. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. All right, well, you know what? I think we'll end on Judge Judy. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what would Judge Judy say right now, Ron? Uh, she'd say, bird, get these people the hell out of here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, our buddy Tony Cox is, is really best buddies with bird. I know. Yeah. Yeah. They're, he lives, he lives in, in the Sacramento. area. Yeah. yeah, he lives in Sacramento. That's funny. You watch too much Judge Judy. Right? <laughs> you really do. <laughs> Cutie pie. All right. Uh, so please use common sense. Really, my friends, you know, or you can anticipate how your dog is going to react and you know, a lot of people are watching this show saying, Lou, really a pit bull? Yeah. Yes. Because my pit bull has been raised in a home where she knows nothing but love and compassion and um, uh, being nurtured. And she's one of the greatest dogs I've ever had. However, that doesn't mean I can turn a blind eye at any time. All right. So just remember that. Be yep. careful uh, and um, use your head. All right, that'll do it for us. Uh, we'd love to have your canine comments yeah. below. Feel free at any time. Ronnie and I always respond to our comments when you send them yep. and enjoy them. If you have an email question you'd like to send us, we'd like that too. And we'd like it if you'd send it to both of us. Yeah. So I'm going to put up my email address right there and I'll put Ronnie's up right there. So um, you can send it to both of us, all right? Uh, If you enjoyed the show, hope you did, learned something, great. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell. Yeah. When you click that bell, you're saying, well, what happens? Does does a bell ring somewhere in Indiana? (laughs) No. But you will get notifications each time a new show comes out. Every time you click that button, Alec Baldwin's going to punch somebody in the face. And an angel gets its wings. (laughs) I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. This has been Men Are So Smart. See you.